Lebanon has been witnessing since mid of October, uh, to be exact, 17th of October 2019, a protest movement that is very deep, uh, the deepest one that we witnessed in Lebanon since uh, the end of the Lebanese civil war uh, at the end of the, the 80s and following the Ta'if agreement. The protest movement started initially following a tax imposed on uh, WhatsApp, uh, but it's much deeper. It, it has uh, socio-economic uh, reasons. People are fed up of the, the, the economic crisis, are fed up of the neoliberal policies that have been imposed uh, in the country since the beginning of the 90s. Um, unemployment is over for nearly 30%. Uh, this was in October. It, it has uh, increased since then. Uh, level of poverty have been increasing since uh, the beginning of the 90s. So it was a protest movement to, to challenge the socio-economic policies to, um, that has been implemented since the 90s, neoliberal policies, but also a protest against, more generally, the Lebanese sectarian system that have been dividing um, the Lebanese people since the independence of the country, but have been used as a way also the sectarian system to uh, distribute power among uh, a small elite um, of people. So it's really um, interlinked the sectarianism and the neoliberal aspect uh, of the economy. And what is different also with this protest movement is that it's very much decentralized, not only concentrated in Beirut, but we've seen massive protest movement until today in the, the northern areas of the country, Tripoli, which is the most impoverished uh, city uh, in Lebanon and its surrounding areas, to the south, to Nabati and Sur, uh, and also the Beka uh, and the, the borders close to, um, to Syria. So we've seen protests throughout Lebanon, which is very much different than the previous protest movement in 2015 with the Ustink movement and in the beginning of the, the general uprisings of the region in 2011 also was very much concentrated in Beirut and it's much more deeper in the sense that it's much more popular it's not only in many sense 2015-2011 was a bit more restricted to the liberal middle class of uh, Beirut we see the popular uh, areas the different popular areas and the different sects being um, involved in this uprising. And it's been ongoing until now. Uh, and there's been a radicalization in many aspects of the, of the movement since 17th of October. We've seen increasing attacks against symbols, if you want, of corruption, of wealth in Lebanon, being, for example, banks that have played a, a critical role uh, in the economic crisis uh, of the country, but also places of wealth that have been privatized, for example, uh, areas close to the, the beach, uh, particular areas of the center of the city that are well known for, for being wealthy and that most of the Lebanese people cannot uh, benefit from it. Um, and since then, there have also been um, aspects of uh, organization, structuration of the movement, which is the biggest challenge because protests have been ongoing, but there have been a, a bit of a lack of organization needing it. And there are new attempts to, to organize, to structure this movement across geographical areas and across uh, sectarian differences. Indeed, uh, this protest movement, within it, you do have uh, Shia popular classes that have started to challenge the role of uh, Hezbollah and its uh, its ally Harakat Aman, uh, we've seen protesters, you know, denouncing directly the role of Hezbollah of being part of the ruling class, of implementing the same policies that the rest of the the political elite when it comes to neoliberal policies or the way they manage the various neighborhoods, cities, villages uh, they govern. Uh, of patronage networks as well. Um, so it's indeed the first time that we see at this level. Uh, a protest movement challenging Hezbollah, even within, uh, to some extent, its own popular classes, the Shia popular classes. Uh, Hezbollah has um, reacted to this protest movement first by opposing it very harshly. The, the first speech of Hassan Nasrallah, uh, two weeks after, one week after the, uh, 
the beginning of the protest movement was very harsh against the protesters, ac accusing the protest movement of being controlled by foreign powers, by foreign embassies. Um, and uh, it also, following the speech of Hassan Nasrallah, the Secretary General, uh, mobilized its own popular masses, its own supporters, to challenge the movement, not hesitating also to attack physically the protesters in, uh, in various areas of Lebanon, especially in Beirut and in southern cities, whether Sur uh, or uh, Nebatiye, or even in some areas of the Bekaa. Um, so, and also through its medias, uh, through its medias, trying to, to portray the movement as being controlled by foreign embassy, of being, you know, people involved from outside, conspiracy theories, etc. Or just to, to, to portray the, the, the movement in a very negative way. A uh, few weeks after, uh, Hassan Nasrallah, the Secretary General, uh, moderated its discourse, saying, yes, indeed, there were uh, general demands that are honest, but that a lot of people leading it were controlled by foreign embassies or wanted um, uh, negative uh, issues on against Hezbollah, against Lebanon, and that they were part of the movement that were controlled by sectarian political parties that are historical enemies of uh, Hezbollah, just like the Lebanese forces of Samir Jaja, or by uh, other uh, political currents. But the main message remained, uh, saying that basically a solution ha has to be found within the sectarian neoliberal system of Lebanon, that the president cannot be challenged, who is a very close ally of Hezbollah, Michel Aoun, and his political party, um, and still maintaining intimidation uh, tactics against protesters. And basically, until today, this has been the position of Hezbollah, trying to maintain the sectarian system, uh, so trying to find a solution within the, the sectarian system, um, and maintaining its close relationship with its closest ally, uh, being the Free Patriotic Movement of Michel Aoun and Harakat Amal uh, of uh, Nabi Berri. Um, in addition to this, as I said, as I mentioned, maintaining intim intimidating tactics, attacking some protesters or historic uh, figures that oppose Hezbollah among the also the Shia community, um, while also uh, sending people in some neighborhoods of Beirut, Tahrir, which is the uh, southern suburbs co considered, uh, you know, dominated by Hezbollah, asking, uh, no, showing people that you know they they're doing uh, their own research to see who is participating in these neighborhoods to the protest movement. So uh, also tactics of intimidation. And the latest signs of support of Hezbollah is to the current government in Lebanon that was uh, formed in mid-December. Uh, Hezbollah voted in favor of this uh, government while saying it's not its own government, but it's definitely supporting it and trying to put an end to the protest movement through these different ways. Institutional ways, through this, as I said, the support of this uh, government, or institutional ways by maintaining the sectarian and illiberal system uh, and maintaining its close relationship with allies that are also being challenged by the protest movement, uh, violent tactics, attacking protesters, using also media to portray negatively the, the movement, and also now using increasingly following the assassination of Qasem Soleimani, the head of the Pastoran uh, Iranian uh, military, uh, military army, uh, using geopolitical tensions to try to, uh, to concentrate all the problems of Lebanon uh, of foreign tensions, foreign geopolitical tensions, putting the blame on the US, also for the economic problems. Uh, but this is not working uh, for the moment. So Hezbollah is definitely seeing this movement, uh, this protest movement, as a challenge uh, to its power. And in this way, it's not different at all from the rest of the political elite that also see this movement as a challenge to its rule.